the song of the forest, the sound of wind and leaves, the rushing of water flowing over the stones, every small creature that breathes. Hear the birds sing as they play with the wind up in the branches so high. Oh, if we don't change the way that we're living, all of this beauty must die. The story of Terrania Creek is essentially the story of rainforests everywhere. Rainforest. That cradle of evolution has been hacked, cleared, felled, milled and burnt until now there is only 40% of what the world once had. And the remainder is disappearing at the rate of 11 million hectares per year. That's over 30,000 hectares a day, 20 hectares a minute. Experts tell us that by the year 2100, half the existing species of plants and animals will be extinct. Terrania Creek is one of the last remnants of what was once called the Big Scrub, 100,000 hectares of magnificent rainforest. There is now one thousandth of that rainforest left a sort of all-out mining operation. And rainforest doesn't renew. It doesn't reverse that cycle. And if you disturb it enough, it begins an internal breakdown that eventually is irreversible and complete. It was here at Terrania Creek in August 1979 that 300 young people who'd moved here over the last six years to resettle in the country, decided to make a stand, to ask for an environmental impact study, to question the Forestry Commission's management of rainforests, and to show their love for earth and life. Open your eyes to the sights of the forest, a cascade of color and form. And every small place that you look around you, a new kind of beauty is born. See the tall trees reaching up to the sky, the seedlings that spring from the earth. And you are the one who now must decide how much is this really worth. Today is Thursday, the 16th of August. It's about uh, quarter to nine in the morning, at approximately 10 past eight. We were all awoken by uh, shouts of the bulldozer was coming. Coming in from one end, we had the bulldozer, and the other end, paddy wagon with uh, three officers in it. But at this stage, everything seemed very friendly. We sure do hope it stays that way. It's beautiful here walking through the forest. We sure would be a shame to see you get knocked down. Oh, 
type of rainforest, lowland subtropical rainforest left anywhere in the state. Now, any, any interaction with that could bring in something that we don't know about. And all we say is the study should be carried out before it's done, so that we've got some idea what we're doing before we do it. We shall not be Even the forester's major research officer, Alex Floyd, right? He he said, now, just a minute. Well, he you, said you, that you, more uh, study was needed. I will agree that Alex Floyd is our major expert on, on identifying rainforest species. Right. He's no longer in research. He's seconded to the National Parks and Wildlife Service okay. for that specific purpose. All right. Well, whatever I he would, is, he said would, that more I, study should be carried out on this forest, right? Yeah. He, to to yeah. establish the situation. That's on record. It's in writing. Yeah. And that's what we're agreeing with. If he thinks so, we certainly think so too. That bad, well, right? you're breathing. What are you doing to the bloody atmosphere? Well, I think you, you breathing, is a, natural, on, on breathing is a natural uh, on process breathing. and it's quite cool. I think you can't blame someone for polluting by breathing. What are you talking about? Huh? You want to eliminate us all from uh, the planet? I think so. For four and a half years, local conservationists had tried every official way to save Terrania Creek Forest from being logged. One submission, which transcepted the forest, taking samples of every kind of tree, was sent to the government and lost. A second ended up unnoticed. So when the bulldozer arrived, the road was blocked with demonstrators. Policemen and foresters gathered, sang together, had a cup of tea, and decided it would be best to back off. The first step in the logging operation at Terrania Creek was to bulldoze a road and snigging tracks starting at Mackay's Road and Terrania Creek Road extending up the middle of the virgin rainforest. Two and three hundred year old brush box and blackbutt trees were to be cut out of the buffer zones on each side, dragged to logging camps, then taken back down the road by timber jinker. On Friday the 17th of August, protesters again set up their blockade and waited in a camp that had been set up on the edge of the forest. The police are mobilising now to move in, move in here. And we know also that um, they, intend, they intend to hassle this camp. We've got, we've got that much. We saw the plane a while ago too, they're taking a good look at the camp and so on. Um, we're ready. And the other word is that they intend to come in in force. Uh, 108 police arrived at Terrania Creek. Their orders were to shift the blockade placed at the two entrance roads to the forest and move the protesters out of the way of the bulldozer. Politicians had been generally non-committal about Terrania. If they backed the loggers, then they were against their own environmental guidelines. If they backed the conservationists, the loggers would cry unemployment. Despite the fact that the issue was to be discussed the following Tuesday in a cabinet meeting, the police had been ordered to come in early, presumably to frighten the demonstrators home. <laughs> Lynn Gordon, Minister for Conservation, was one minister who definitely did express an opinion. It's a matter of principle. Conservationists have won enough concessions. Terrania Forest must not become the preserve of a few people. Ladies, please, come in.
<laughs> well, they've been really heavy. I nearly had my arm broken. They've been really vicious, brutal. They've been throwing us in the bush, dragging, dragging us on the ground. ground. Kids, children really crying. I mean, they've been not bloody not bloody 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 Nothing like has been said to me. Why have I been taken to this van? Which officer is prepared to arrest me and on what yeah, grounds, please? What ground? Come on, come on. Who is arresting me? Which are you arresting me? On what charge? What charge? Okay, that's cool. Check him and just doing what we think is right. What is Later that day, the bulldozer started reopening the old logging road, commonly called Lantana Lane. A contingent of 100 police arrived at the scene early this morning in a fleet of some 20 cars a bus and five paddy wagons. They were brought in from Lismore and other North Coast stations, with a few coming from the nearby tablelands. The task of the police was to ensure that a bulldozer could resume work on the reopening of a logging track to be used by sawmillers. About 300 people, mostly local new settlers, demonstrated peacefully in protest, and according to their spokesman, made no attempt to block the way into the forest. They milled around as the bulldozer started work. The 11 people arrested today were charged with obstruction. They've been bailed to appear in the Lismore court next Monday. A police spokesman at Lismore said this evening the exercise would continue. The station, the police that arrested you, and then try to get hold of the numbers, OK? Yeah, no, I don't think it's... Let them bring in 200 police. How many times can they do it? Every time they do it, they look more stupid. <laughs> That's it. What are we? Are uh, sitting here asking for an environmental impact study. That's all. If that's worth keeping 200 police up here for two weeks, let them explain that to the electorate. An independent. The police are going to get aggressive. We don't know what they've got in their heads. Right, right. And they feel that we're being illegal and that maintains something in their eyes, you know, that we're being illegal. Right. And we might need to completely withdraw and just come back here and sit. No. You know, right. and make that's an issue we, just that way. We have to be prepared to change our tactics all the time. At, at, at any <coughs> given day, if we see them acting in a certain way, we can just turn around our tactics altogether and totally confuse them. Like, like today, they've flown over and noted all our blockades. Now, we could confuse them completely tomorrow if we didn't have the blockades, if we had some other little system going. Now, this is what we've got to think of. We've just got to totally confuse these people. The information that we have is that there are bulk police, that they are determined this bulldozer is going to do its thing today. We're not here to prove that we can defeat force with force. Show 
you not prepared to move them? Oh, she barks, she's... Yes, what's the problem? Well, just that you've got cars parked on my paddock. On my man. Oh, well, I don't know how much I think about that. Well, what do you yeah. think about it? We'll, we'll consider it. Yeah. Uh, when can I expect an answer? Oh, well, shortly. Okay, I'll wait. Uh, would you come with me and check the peg, please? Um, yeah. So I can show you where my boundary is? All right, we'll, we'll check it shortly. No, I'd like to check now. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see you in a minute. Does that mean you refuse to move your vehicles? At this stage, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's my request. Yes, at this stage. Yes. All right. We asked them to leave and marked the area onto our land with paint, but uh, the paint didn't show up. Um, so I went back to the truck and found there a, a jerry can of petrol and carried it out and uh, dribbled it all out behind the cars to kill the grass, so it would be a permanent marker to show where they'd been. And uh, all of a sudden, police came from everywhere and were crouching down, peering at me over the bonnet and boots of cars. And it was only a few minutes after that that word came back that the keys were coming back out of the forest for them to move their cars off my land. between police and demonstrators may have been inconclusive, but this time there's just no stopping the bulldozer. It's just marching straight ahead, ignoring demonstrators. You can take a bulldozer from under our noses. You can take a bulldozer from under our noses. We're not as gutless as the sawmill supposes. Hands up our greenery. Take home your machinery. Take your bulldozers away. Standard mills to the devil Choke on your sawdust, you're not on the level Save our forest forever Take your bulldozers away I was just asking him, why was he having people pushing the truck? He says, because you might get hurt. I said, hi, we're not. No, I'm afraid I can't make any comment. We want to know why you're, none of your officers here are wearing numbers, sir. No comment? Do you not have a comment on this question? You abduct me with arrest. Who am I abducting? You told me I was charged with obstruction by whom? Who was I abducting? Who? Who? No, you, you hit me in the balls. Jesus, mate. What are you? What sort of an animal?
in the rainforest so that's where it's a big wash you see because we're concerned about the damage they do in going through the rainforest and then taking the buffer areas around it that's what they're going to do is log all the areas around it so that all the light and and weeds and everything get into it from the outside that virtually destroys it once you cut it up the middle and then take what's around it away it's not going to survive they're very delicate systems the first trees had been felled the protesters were stunned by the speed of the operation the road now extended about one and a half kilometers and was into the virgin rainforest. Well over 100 police came every day and 30 reinforcements were flown in from Sydney. As the bulldozer moved on relentlessly forming the road through the forest, many people took to camping in the trees while others walked slowly in front of the bulldozer. Tactics meetings were held each day to decide on the best ways to slow the operation down. The way of immobilising that bulldozer is to make access difficult and to make it impossible to get fuel. And those are the things we ought to be looking at. On that point, can I just say that it's the, the, the delaying tactics. They're, obviously, they can move anything we want to put up against them. They can move it. But it's purely delaying. Now, about two miles or a mile and a half down the road, we've got a dam with about 150,000 gallons of water in it. I don't see why we can't siphon that onto the road continuously at that point, maybe spread over 100 yards or so. I think that would make it almost impossible for any tired vehicle to get to In terms of delaying, it's really to slow the whole thing down so that enough people can think about the issue and can come up the realisation that, that we do need a study to work the thing out. You know, that's the whole point, isn't it? Right. Conservationists from all over the country were arriving and sending messages of support. As loggers were cutting logs as fast as they could, Anything that might slow them down was tried. On Friday the 24th of August, conservationists asked Superintendent Wilkes to order the bulldozer to stop for 10 minutes so that they could sing it a song. People go down to the woods today, you better go in disguise. If you go down to the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. And if you go on and you'll see soon, there won't be any trees today. Today the forest is doing their logging. We are the foresters, we are the foresters, we're doing a job of work today. We're using bulldozers and chainsaws to knock this out of the way. We're here to clear the land, we're working for the man, that's all we understand. We bust, we chop, we bug the forest, we crash them to the ground, because we're working for the man. The Terrania Creek logging dispute was now well into the second week. The bill for the police guard was now approximately $200,000. A 1,500 square metre logging bay had been carved out of the rainforest and people had become very emotional about the damage caused from snigging the logs to the dump. Well, Dudley, yesterday we spoke and uh, you hoped this wouldn't happen. It has happened and your feelings. Well, we're very sad to see this going ahead. We're seeing what we've said would happen if they came into this type of rainforest, this type of country to do this. Massive destruction to take a few logs. You know, we can't see that it's justified. Well, it's certainly chopped the forest about, hasn't it? It sure has. This is the, the, one of the big problems is they, it's quite deceptive the way it's described and they talk about selective logging. It sounds quite nice and genteel. In other words, they take say 50% of all the... Well, they say they'll take 50% of the canopy, and that's the trees they choose to take out. Right. But they don't take into account all the snig tracks and this sort of problem that goes on. Yeah. The amount of damage that's taken in smashing their way in to pull out the logs, like you've got here, damage the trees like this on the side, more damage down here. And, you know, <laughs> this is the question, I think, that's at issue. If trees are grown for timber in plantations, you don't have this sort of problem. But going into this sort of virgin country, 
and pulling it out uh, and smashing down a whole lot of trees that aren't considered valuable by timber industry simply because they're not logging timber. Yeah. But the trees have other values, this is the point, the other, other uses. Well, um, it, it appears now that you may have lost the battle. Um, has, has force won the day? Well, the way I look at it, force can't win the day. Force can only lose the day for all of us. Because if this goes on, the way I see it is we all lose. We're losing a valuable resource in this country. And worse than that, we're losing the, the principle that uh, legitimate means you know, can have effect. And we're seeing that force wins again. And that, to me, means that we lose again. Stamping through the fairies, Glen cursing as they cross the singing water. And you tell me that the sun will shine today. Na na na, you better pick up your love and hide it away. Gathered all and pushed inside the prison walls, offered to the abattoirs of justice. You can run us off the land and you can chase us from the sea. You can lock us in your prisons, but you know that we're still free. And I fear that the sun won't shine today. Na na na, you better. You should go for a walk in there, officer. It'll blow your mind. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful in there. Bulldozers are going to go in there and big chainsaws are going to go in there and they're going to chop down box trees between 120 and 200 years old. Charlie told me that this morning, the forestry man. 120 and 200 years old, those box trees. Just think how big they are. Just think how old they are. You should go and see them. They're beautiful. The situation was not always one of tension. It certainly had its lighter moments for both sides. Protesters had formed into groups, and one of these groups was the physical and mental health group, whose job it was to give relaxing massages to police and protesters alike. Back in the forest, it was business as usual. People climbed in treetops, often a hundred feet up, made bird noises and called out to each other. Others, on the ground, played chasings with the police. It was becoming a war of nerves, and everyone was tired and strained. The all clear before the trees came down was becoming half-hearted, and no one seemed to care that someone below might be in the way. How do you know that that's going to be one of the trees that's going to get chopped down? 
This particular tree isn't going to be chopped down, but it's in the direct path of two other trees that have been marked. Do you think that's going to be effective in stopping them felling those trees? Or? I feel it is. Okay, thank you. Well, it's a very heavy little game that's being played here at the moment. Before that tree fell, it was quite obvious that there were people down in that area, but the tree fell anyway. Now, they'd cut it part way through, and uh, there was nothing they could do to stop it. But even so, there were people down in that area when that tree fell. And for God's sake, I hope none of them were under it. During the weekend, while foresters and police were taking a break, several of the felled logs were sawn up. The protesters were very disheartened. For over two weeks, with more than 100 police, there had been no violence, and the protesters had won a great deal of respect. Now, everyone felt tense and nervous of police retaliation. It's $10,000 for a study, that's all we've ever asked for. Why is it costing several hundred thousand dollars to stop that study? That's just brought on by frustration, Ron. Uh, even um, you, must, you must understand that that's an entitlement to us. I mean, forgetting a police point of view, because it doesn't affect us, from a, from a citizen point of view, there's just no excuse for it. You can't, you can't, that's unacceptable. Well, Ron, and, uh, it's being ignored. And it's up to those people. Not yeah, it's been to, totally to ignored. You, Ron, it's been ignored. The forestry department's own scientists said it should be studied. Well, it's been run by big well. business. You know, they rip off the country. They've ruined it. There's yeah, nothing left. What I'm, left. Arguing about it. what I'm saying, in the eyes of John Citizen, you must Get have it? lost your credibility. You no. Oh. What's going to happen from here now? It's a, it's a stalemate, so to speak. You can't get in and cut timber. The timber that's been cut has been damaged. Um, what's going to happen? Well, I think it's, uh, as I see it, um, uh, the issue is uh, whether the uh, uh, the will of the uh, state government is going to prevail or the will of the people of Terania Creek. It's, uh, uh, in, in effect, these people have uh, taken on the state government. Scientific, Aboriginal and conservation groups with memberships totalling well over 100,000 people had come out in support of the protesters at Terania Creek. A rally held at the campsite on Sunday the 2nd of September saw a roll-up 
of 2,000 who'd come out to show their support. The pressure from the general public made the logging of Terrania Creek a national issue that the government could no longer avoid. A further cabinet meeting again discussed what to do about Terrania Creek. The outcome was relayed to the camp. Well, the word is that a committee is coming up here to investigate it because there was about four that didn't want to vote on the cabinet. They was just were sitting on the fence and we had apparently about even numbers either other way and they didn't want to vote on it until they'd seen the situation and talked to everybody up here. So they're coming up to have a look at it probably the end of this week sometime. <laughs> I think, it's a, I think it's a really positive uh, move the government's making and I think that only good can come out of it. At least now they're stopping and they're going to take a clear look at the whole thing and hopefully we'll come out of it with a policy for rainforests in New South Wales. I, th <laughs> I think about it all, I think it's fantastic. We've won, I think. And, and I think the, the whole community's won, you know, it's the, the, the people have won. Like we've been acting the conscience of the people and, and it's come through. That's what I think. <laughs> State Cabinet was still very divided on the issue, but decided to send a subcommittee of six ministers to inspect Terrania Forest. On Sunday, the 16th of September, 70 conservationists turned up at Casino Airport to sing their song of welcome. circumstances of extreme harassment and I don't think the guys were as able to do as good a job as they normally would have. To me it's a magnificent, unique rainforest. Actually I, I, I think it's a pretty professional job. I, yeah, I reckon the, much the amount of damage, damage done by the falling of this tree is uh, negligible. Uh, what did they tell us how old the logs were, that, uh, the trees that were taken out here? What, what uh, age would they be, uh, roughly? Between oh, what? Same, yesterday, 200, 300 years old. The Cabinet still could not come to a decision. Caucus decided to send a further 12 backbenchers to inspect Terrania Creek. On Sunday, the 23rd of September, 300 pro-logging demonstrators turned up at Casino Airport to give their welcome. We want jobs! We want jobs! We want a government that's big for decision. Of course I do! This whole thing is not an employment issue. We know it's only going to take about six months to log Terrania Creek, and we know that the, the timber industry on the north coast is looking pretty grim. So the only option we've got left at the moment is to start employing people in reforestation. Anyone, anyone with half an eye can see that there's been cutting in this whole northern area going on much faster than the growth, growth rate for years. And no, this is so. And, and timber is running out. So you're talking of a time scale of thousands of years. And uh, you know, a man came in here, and within you know a century, he's knocked all that rainforest out in the lowlands except the bottom of the Gibbergunya for agriculture and for whatever, and for bloody cows mostly. You know. When will you ever get anything like this again, or a decent-sized tree? But my argument is that the unlogged rainforest should be protected as far as possible, and when you get to a sort of a marginal rainforest type like this, I'd say it shouldn't be touched. After two visits by state MPs it was finally decided to stop the logging operation and give the conservationists their environmental study. Justice Simon Isaacs was appointed to take evidence from interested groups and individuals giving their opinions on the importance of Terrania Creek. Well, to me, Terrania Creek Forest 
is incredibly important. I do think of it in world terms that it's important to save all bits of rainforest. But I particularly feel it because I live here and I wake up every morning and see how incredibly beautiful it is. Oh, it's just the most magical place. Whenever you go in there, you go to a different area, you see something new. And, and even if you go to the same places, they're different somehow. You see new things. It might be a different fungus, but it's every time it's something really special. What have been the feelings of the community? What's happened since? Um, there's been a very drastic response in the community to the, to the whole forest park. Um, there are a fair few extremists in the, the Shannon area. And uh, the whole feeling in the, the rural area has really changed. It's very nasty and they, they won't even wave to us, which seems to me a very important thing in a rural community, that you wave to people. And there's generally just hatred around on all sides from, that, um, from those people. It's very upsetting for us. Many of the older established residents of the area were confronted by the fact that the new settlers had apparently taken to issue the state government and won their point. They talked of action against the new settlers. An advertised public meeting was held and speakers included several concerned residents and an officer of the Forestry Commission. People who even looked like new settlers, including an ABC News film crew, were pointed out at the meeting by the organisers and ejected by police. Any advances that we've made so far to try and heal the rift and uh, explain what happened here uh, doesn't seem to, to make any progress, any headway at all. So I don't see it healing for quite a while. I hope it does. But uh, it's a very major rift in the community at this stage. They've come into the village. Uh, they've, they've more or less taken over most of the village. And uh, we, we just don't uh, think that uh, that should go on. We're, we're, we, we were people that were born and bred here, and we're not quite happy to be taken over by, by someone that's just come along. And is that the only thing? Oh, I don't think that's the only thing, no. There, there's, there's other things. Uh, there, there's especially, especially the way they dress, the way they clean themselves. They come down in any, any condition. Uh, not worried whether there's, they're hurting anyone else. The, the children are, are quite quite naked a lot of times, they've got no clothes, and, and we're not used to that. So you consider that this whole issue has sparked off a whole... So it, it, it has definitely sparked off a lot of reaction that would never have happened if it had went along and the government had, a, had a made the decision and stuck to it in the first place, yeah. Well, it's a very important uh, uh, matter to me. I think it's an important matter to millions of Australians that we don't waste our heritage, that we don't uh, uh, unnecessarily uh, uh, crop trees. Once, you, once it's down, it's uh, down uh, and gone for this and future generations. Deep in the green of the trees, away from life cyclone, well, you know that it's the only place a city owl can call home. Cooey! Leave that rainforest alone. Cooey! Oh, leave that rainforest alone. Well, money sucks you in and you can't see. Worth to leave standing. The last rainforest trees, well, let me tell you, no, sir. Ain't gonna let you log in this valley. Terrania Creek has become the first all out environmental confrontation in Australia. The protesters came for a day and ended up staying for a month, trying to save the last of the rainforest trees. Out of this protest has come an environmental inquiry, a desire for a rainforest preservation policy, and serious doubt that the Forestry Commission is able to evaluate and manage the nation's forests for our children to appreciate. Also, a desire to see the government implement a heritage policy which would protect these rare and precious environmental remnants, and as well, start a massive reforestation project, which it is thought would employ approximately 5,000 people on the North Coast alone. Australia 
has destroyed more of her rainforest than any other country in the world. There has been too much destruction. There is now an urgent need to preserve and to take great care of the few ancient, isolated pockets of rainforest that remain. Thank you.